home I think of a place where there's love overflowing I wish I was home I wish I was back there with the things I've been knowing Wings that make the talk Hi, my name is Larry White, and I am your producer and director of The Inner Beat. The Inner Beat is a socially conscious program that sometimes showcases cultural events as well as community events. And occasionally, we'll even bring a little song and dance. So sit back and enjoy The Inner Beat. So I used to ask the question, when Europe was going through its dark ages. What was happening in Africa? What was happening in India and Asia? Because if we're going to talk about world history, then we have to talk about what was happening in every part of the world during a specific period in time. And I knew the answer. I was being a, you know, small. <laughs> um, and it's interesting to know that when you talk about the Renaissance, that the Renaissance, which is really the, because the rebirth of Europe, happened because Europeans were trading with African countries, in East Indian countries, and Asian countries. And through that experience, they began to develop a better system of cooking. They began to develop a better system of, uh, a better appreciation for art and culture. And so therefore they went through a renaissance. But, but no one connects the dots. The link is not connected. It's just sort of Europe was dark. It went through a rebirth. There happened to be some trading. But there's not a specific connection between the two worlds. So when you look at the development of these European countries, it could not have happened without the influence of countries that were in the East. So these are the kind of things that I, that I believe that we need to address when we deal with teaching history in our schools. The curriculum needs to be reorganized so that it truly reflects the totality of the experiences and the biasness has to be removed. You have to understand the history that we're reading is rooted in a biasness. And actually what's happening is it's rooted in the destruction of one people and the rise of another. So when you win what is considered a war, you get to tell your perspective. Mm -hmm. So most of the things that we've learned in history are not true. They're taught with a slant, they're taught with a perspective. So I think that um, that's important. I think when you talk about the how, you, can't, you also have to deal with teaching history, not just within the context of school, but we have to begin to rethink about how we're using our churches, our mosques, our after-school programs, because I, I would never uh, believe that the school system will actually ever totally embrace the concept of teaching from an African-centered curriculum, because schools were not set up in America to really educate. Y'all do know that. <laughs> Education is, is, is a Latin word. Ed means out of, duco means to lead. In true education, you're leading someone out of one condition into another. Schools were not meant to be centers of education. Schools were meant to be centers of training. If you go back and look at why do we have two months off in the summer, it's rooted in us being an agricultural society. And when it was time for farming, the students had to be off so that they could work the land. Then as we moved from agriculture and we went into an industrial society, you saw schools putting certain programs into their buildings. They had wood shop, home economics. You know, some, some people worked on cars because it was rooted in industry. But that's not education, that's training. So there's a distinction and there's a difference. Then we went into the information age. And In information, now you have all of this technology. So what do they have in the schools? Mm -hmm. Computers, training. 
But that's not education. It's training. Now, if they have training for the jobs of the future, let's just do the math here because we were talking about the economy, and we all know that there's only a certain amount of people who are going to get a certain amount of jobs because there's only a certain amount of jobs that exist. Training still has to take place. So why they condition one group of students towards law, medicine, engineering, politics, then they, they condition another group of students towards the service industry, which is working at McDonald's, or the, in, the prison industrial complex. And this is why, based on the third grade assessment, they begin to track students towards incarceration. I mean, I remember I was a high school assistant principal, and I couldn't believe they would actually give students what is called an attendance diploma. Mm -hmm. And you know what that means? It means you were there. Mm -hmm. And they would let students walk across the stage with their attendance diploma and leave that building believing that they actually achieved something. And that attendance diploma is worthless. So what is that student going to eventually involve himself in if he has an economic need, but he doesn't have the skills to secure a job that's going to be able to feed himself and eventually his family, then more than likely he's at risk for being involved in something illegal, which will be the doorway to the criminal justice system. The Governor Patterson, if I had the opportunity to talk to him, I would want to ask him, why is so much money spent on incarceration as opposed to education. Where is the preventive piece? Why is it that these towns that used to be economically depressed are now experiencing a renaissance because they replaced the factory with the prison? And all the prisons are upstate, but the people in those prisons are from the city. Seven communities, five close, yeah. Yes. 40% of our African-American boys. And not only that, we're going to get to the man, the boys, but not only that, but uh, the prisons are privatized. They're money-making institutions. And you don't hear anyone talking about this. And so you have a people, because of lack of knowledge, us, because we've been void of knowledge, we constantly engage in ourselves in behavior that takes us through that process, and we have been conditioned to accept being nothing. You know, there's a saying, we love the devil because he gives us nothing. And I used to say this to my students all the time. You go to that teacher who's pushing you, wants to know where your homework is. It's on your back because you didn't make it to class. It's calling your home because they haven't seen you in a couple of days. That's the teacher you don't like. But you love the teacher or you love the devil who gives you nothing. So that teacher who sits back and sips that cup of coffee. Wake up everybody, no more sleeping in bed. No more back for thinking, time for thinking ahead. The world has changed so very much.